Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm still second. <laughs> Yay. I'm Willie Ryder. I didn't tell them what order they're going to be in, so you know, but they don't. Surprise. Uh, next up, with a kitty cat friend, it's Alex. Hey, I'm Feather, and I'm being held here against my will. But <laughs> I, they said they needed somebody stupid about Wobs to be on this episode, so that's what I'm You're here to do. You're actually very good at it, though, if you do it, though. Well, that's the I thing. am actually good. I just we don't... We need yeah. somebody of intelligence, but uneducated who's not immersed wise. in it yeah, who's not but immersed not you're not much. immersed yes. you're yeah. not immersed. every podcast needs somebody who's being tortured so hello i'm here you're you know that's the herald's motto really yeah, exactly <laughs> the, the herald and as everyone knows i love it when people get tortured so it's just my turn i Cheers. would love like a herald's podcast like not a podcast on the Heralds, but oh. a podcast run by. Them. I was like, we we've, we've done Herald like, podcast several this times. This is the that. torture in Braves is they have to like do a podcast all the time, but they are forced to read every YouTube comment, and all of them are mean. See, every thinking, negative comment about the honor and the Heralds. I'm thinking like a ten person cast, and they're just always talking over each other, and that's oh torture. yeah, no, like they're just like, like trying to shut up, you know, like <laughs> God. Damn it, Gullick. The, the, somebody's <laughs> microphone keeps buzzing and they just can't get it to stop. It, 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 and that one would be like Ash, the Lightweaver one, just generating random noises. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. because the, the light <laughs> weaving yeah, it generates... Uh, mm -hmm. Well, but it's basically because it's light and sound and it's also radio waves and stuff like that and it just constantly <laughs> interferes with... There and I feel like... No Shalash is also just doing a mukbang during the whole thing. And that's where half of the noises are oh, coming no. from. And it's just like, there's like five different kinds of podcasts all happening at the same time. Yeah. There's no rails on the podcast in hell. No. <laughs> we should use that as a title for something sometime that's good uh also we should probably finish the introduction so we also also joining Fine. us is evgeny <laughs> winner <laughs> hi i am argent and when we told alex that we need someone dumb to be on the podcast no. Uninitiated. We were also like, we need someone handsome and intelligent to be on the podcast. And yeah, that's where why is I'm he? here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Too bad Joff couldn't make it today. <laughs> yeah. He, he is a yeah. handsome man. He is a handsome man. That is sure. That is true. That is true. But he's also married. So, yes. I thought I was the person who was also handsome and smart in this sort of a thing. I was dumb, uh, but also handsome. Well, but that's because we told you that. <laughs> Wow, brutal. <laughs> I am getting tortured this episode. We're getting out the hooks and flames. Let's go. Let's go to Braze, baby. <laughs> podcast from hell. Store. Or is it podcast on hell? Unclear. You know, what's, uh, what's clear is your drink. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That is true. The, the void drink. The void drink. Ooh, oh, yes. yeah. I guess I should... Um, the the patrons benefited from this in the um after dark stream God. that we did which if you join our patreon for as little you can as watch another, like four to was it four hours or five hours of content it was a lot of content it was four it was, it was four. like four I hours think and 15 hours yeah we did four <laughs> a lot but, of uh, i remember that because i was is, messed up this is what my so drink looks I. like without you're the, ruining the, the illusion of getty <laughs> shut up <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! It, is, it is very funny last but not least in our hearts is i think the funniest person on this show it is well, david well thank you very much i'll take it i will not i will not contest that uh thank you eric <laughs> i i am wind runner on the forums and i'm here with my new world hopper shirt which i just love courtesy of eric picking it up at <laughs> I yes, stood three it, three hours in line to I not get that yeah. in particular, but like a lot of things. It was, it was bad. I know. I was, was bad. I was like, do not go back into that line for it. Like, oh, I was like don't you've worry. already done I your wouldn't. stuff. <laughs> don't do it. Like, I, I literally <laughs> sat, er, not sat, I stood in the line and I was just like pooped for the rest of the day from just standing yeah. in line. 
I I think like hearing about that has convinced me that for next year I will do the VIP if only just because yes. I don't want to like I want to get yes. into the thing yes. early. VIP, and I just for wanna, sure. I don't want to be stressed VIP. about getting into stuff. Like I'm just like there's gonna be a so people there. So I had I had VIP and I went to the store on the second day and it was still bad. Yeah, it was still bad. But like but you I do waited get in earlier. It is better. It's worth it. There's a whole extra day this year. Yes. That's just for and probably Standing twice so many people because that's gonna be Stormlight. Hey, <laughs> I don't want to pay for VIP though. <laughs> I know I'm my, cheap. it's it's my latent like I'm really cheap and don't want to pay for it, but also I did think it would be useful. Actually, that extra I, hour I I would like it. Yeah, and I think like the what like in twenty three like my anxiety about making it into the things that I wanted to get did impact the experience a little bit where I was just like, Oh shoot, am I able to like get in, you know, or like I got a good seat or something like that. So I'm like, eh, you know, yeah. just, just have like, I don't want to worry about that. Is the VIP stuff on the record? Are we talking about dragon? Yeah. This, no, this yeah, is, no, this is you can, two different okay. tiers of you can, tickets. Yeah. yeah like, it's just like, do you yeah. want regular tickets or do you want to spend $140 no, I just, more? I just mean, is this part of the episode? Oh, sure. I, mean, I, mean, I, want I, I don't know. know. We'll find we'll out. Figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll decide. Me. <laughs> me. Me. I need money. Like, so I, I, I will be you. editing. We're, we're upselling. So. All right. So we're going to talk about WOBs today. And it actually makes sense that we are talking about Dragonsteel because we're not going in chronological order. We're going to talk about WOBs from Dragonsteel. We actually do have so many WOBs. I'll, I'll just tell you some inside baseball. I paste WOBs into a document and we usually get through 10 to maybe 12 pages of WOBs in one of our long WOB episodes. So it's like pretty low we don't get through too many we have 45 pages of flops here and some will be cut Oof. it'll be fine so we'll probably have like four episodes so mm -hmm. yeah. th these are not going to be as mega of episodes but you're you're gonna get a lot of wobs so so if in like the next six months of wob episode content you're like why didn't you talk about this wob probably because we got to it in like hour to hour four of a recording we're like we don't care about this we're just going to move on and skip it well it, th that is true because there, there's kind of two filters like i'm going through arcanum and i'm grabbing which ones i think are interesting that are good for conversation and stuff or good good mm -hmm. educationally you know mm -hmm. and then i usually grab more that we need and we go through and we're like ah eh, that's that one we had before we don't need it so it's it's I'm not trying to get through every wob. So if your wob was missed, I'm so sorry. But but it was great and awesome and we love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so let us begin with Ian. With a spoiler policy. Oh, yeah. Spoiler uh, policy. Uh, everything, including Summit everything. Man. Yeah, yeah, but probably not Stormlight 5 previews. Probably. I don't think there's any. I haven't read the interlude. <laughs> yes, oh. You haven't read the um, interlude. Yeah, well, well, I mean. So there there wouldn't be interlude questions because the one. interlude was read after the it's spoiler the game. thing. So, yeah, I don't anticipate it. If it if it happens, it'll be brief and we'll call it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. So, but but definitely Sunlit Man. Sunlit Man is mm -hmm. on the table wow. here for sure. Mm -hmm. So, and we've got he's going to do a spoiler Q and A for that coming up too. We're going to get more wops. Yep. <laughs> thank, thank goodness Brandon stopped touring. Otherwise, that'd be all the comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have you, a separate if, podcast that is just wops. Those are fighting words. We're going to get mad comments. So you just said that though. That's why I said it. <laughs> Look, I engagement. Yeah, we're getting engagement. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, Ian, start us up. Uh, so this one is paraphrased from Forger. Is Nightblood a Dawn Shard? Brandon, he is not. That's good to know. I didn't think he was a Dawn Shard. It's good to have this confirmation because we're whittling down the Nightblood weirdness. You know, <laughs> it's like, let's <laughs> let's narrow down the possibilities of why Nightblood's weird. And it's like not Dawn Shard confirmed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I thought it was possible like yeah he like so much weird stuff has happened and I do believe him to be capable of holding a Don shard like he's so if a wall can hold a Don shard yeah. I think Nightblood can <laughs> exactly Ian that's the exact logic train I want 
<laughs> I think you there are Dawn differences. Shard, like, <laughs> no, I, I want a lineage of Dawn shards that go risen wall unknown like <laughs> you have the night brigade and they're like using a little spike to like track down who's the old holder it's like ah it's just pointing to this wall i'm so confused oh, it's a mural <laughs> i will say i forgot weird. for a moment what fandom we were in and heard wall like w-o-l like the way the final fantasy fandom talks about the warrior of light and i was like warrior of light have a dawn shard though wow so confused anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah that not that fandom and no nope. if, if we if we talk Different about <laughs> uh aethers then i'm sure that will also be confusing for you. you no that's correct you did it right aethers is the right one yeah but it probably means something <laughs> Oh no! Stupidly wait, no, different in ethers. Final Fantasy. <laughs> you can. Do, that's good. anyway. Ethers, ethers. It's, it's ethers, also in ethers. my book, uh, Aether, and I pronounce it that way. So it's no, good. it's wrong. I like it. It's good. I well, I think the one thing that I don't know we said that you said earlier, Eric, yes. which is I think it was possibly involved in the creation. Of, yes, mm-hmm. there was a yes. involved in the creation of Nightblood. For sure. I think that's an still angle plausible. That it's pretty plausible. That yeah. that destroy mm-hmm. Don Shard, right? Gotta yeah, be. If there's a diametric opposition to whatever Don Shard Hoyd Sigzel had, yeah, which is like lifey, you know, yeah, <laughs> lifey, yeah, that's, that's, that's like, like that's the lifey. official name. Out lifey. Lifey. Just be lifey, <laughs> yeah, lifey. <laughs> it was like what? It's like what does that mean though? It's like you figure it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just it. like come in, yeah, it's meant I to like be interpreted. It. Alex, our next one is also about Dawn Shard things. Oh, yeah, we're st- we're just, everybody loves Dawn Shards for some reason. Everybody um, this does is, love Dawn Shards. Not uh, Shard. well, not this Sigzel, is also but... a paraphrased Wob uh, from Lightweaver 2 asking, does Risen have a torment? Um, and Brandon says she hasn't had the Dawn Shard long enough for it to change her spirit web enough. Um, with a follow-up, will she have a torment at some point in the future? And Brandon said she may not call it that, but the Dawn Shard will change her spirit web in drastic ways. Makes sense. I have trouble like extrapolating based on what we saw with Sigzel for like how a change would like apply to Risen. Like if she could be compelled to change all the time or like what, like it's a little less clear to me how it would work, but it does make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's like what you can't really predict what a residence is for a combo of powers. Yeah. Like, it can just it's be a random squires, thing. Am I right? so like, mm-hmm. They're leading, Eric. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, I, I think it's important for these things to make sense retroactively when you look back, but they are not necessarily deterministic. I think Brandon's mm-hmm. going to wait till he writes some cool resident stuff later and be like, yeah, that, that sounds cool. What mm-hmm. cool stuff do I need her to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. This is for, you know, the town fans. Uh, Kenny. <laughs> from, I, from I met the in the town one. fan club, actually, at Dragonsteel. <laughs> All three of yeah. them. <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah, I met them. He's a popular guy. He is. Uh, well, the, the, the number one town fan asks uh who in the cosmere could beat tone in a fight back when he was in his prime and uh brandon says depends on uh, what level of abilities he has access to if you're saying access to full abilities i don't know of anybody who could beat him on an actual one-on-one damn and there was much cheering from the crowd there was (laughs) there was a lot of cheering (laughs) that is a little surprising because i still think lord ruler is like pretty top tier as a combatant you know you're he's got a lot of abilities and can compound all of them <laughs> like it's I, pretty good i feel like maybe town minus blade might lose to fullborn but town with blade like you could you could potentially see it it's tough because we don't really know what like we've never seen a herald do anything they just sit around <laughs> yeah true. that's true, true. Yeah. Other than like so Ishar sure. fighting those Windrunners, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I always come back to because it felt a little ATME. It totally did. What like, he was yeah. doing. Mm-hmm. No, there totally is did. also a little bit of like, like I feel like Brandon said like, oh, Talon has been like a warrior for thousands of yeah. years. Whereas the Lord Ruler <laughs> He's been chilling. has not really fought that much. That's, that's, that's a, a good lot point. of abilities. That's a good point. Yeah. He's yeah. just been kind of sitting in his he's, throne room. He's 
killed armies everybody. and stuff, but probably was really reliant on his superpowers, right? Yeah. To be like, oh, yeah. well, I got I got hit with a thousand things. It doesn't matter. But like if with a shard blade, it's like, OK, well, you're instantly dead if you make a mistake, right? It's like, OK. Yeah. 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 I, I know the topics of Roshar versus Skadriel and Radiance versus <laughs> uh, Mistborn and stuff are hot topics in the fandom for sure hot of, topics is hot topic still open is, hot topic is still a thing yeah. yeah hot topic is still a thing yeah i don't is. think it's quite as mainstream as this it is, maybe once was this the is the hard-hitting analysis you want on this yeah. show let's go on the decline of malls in america <laughs> <laughs> let's ask brandon sanderson about that let's let's see what his opinion is like do you still go to a mall they gotta uh, have malls in Silver Lake. Still go to Hot Topic, Brandon. Dragon malls. Oh, Brandon is a mall guy. He's going to get a pretzel. It's the salty one. He's adding salt to it. That's that's I mean, that, that's a true statement. Yeah. yeah, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> Just making fanfic about Brandon going to a mall. <laughs> RPF. Here we go. We've crossed the line. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that if they have dragon palaces in in Silver Lake, they have dragon malls. Oh yeah. Well, the dragons don't go though. They've got people for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You you yeah. send your that's, assistants. That's why they collect people. It's so they can they can staff the malls. <laughs> staff the malls. Okay. Well, this is the exact sort of chaos that uh you know we Look, all we I'm all just want establishing on this show. expectations. Hi, if you are new to the channel, sorry. <laughs> strap in. This is what it's about. Mm -hmm. What are our Stormlight Five podcasts going to be? They're just going to be totally. Amazing. Uh, all right, David. What do you got? All right. Okay, here's here's a good one from our very favorite question asker, questioner. Uh, is <laughs> prolific. Thank you, thank you yeah. questioner. <laughs> the only person known to beat Argent <laughs> in the Wob Off. Uh, <laughs> the Wob Off. But uh, yeah, just he, yeah, the town. Uh, anyway, so we've got, is Hoyd able to use soul stamps? Uh, and Brandon responds, Hoyd is working on how to figure out how to use soul stamps. As you've seen so far, he has not figured out how to make that work. But he only just barely managed to get access to sellish, sellish magic systems. He's working on it. If he only just managed to get access to sellish magic systems, now with the secret projects, now is very vague. <laughs> it's incredibly vague. The That's vague is true. <laughs> it's anywhere uh, well, from Stormlight about... to near Aerophore. <laughs> it's really narrows down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say probably between Era 3 and Era 4. This feels. Like all of the secret projects feel uh, like proper sure. space age or just mm. before. Well, no, it can't be just before because we you know we have full on rockets and shit. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they all have spaceships. Every every secret project except for Frugal, which I did not raid. Maybe there's a spaceship in there. They all have spaceships. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's a spaceship there. Yeah, power armor exists. Like it's close enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One thought that I had about this that you know. We'll, we'll see what Brandon thinks. He's kind of talked about Cell as like sort of only having one magic system, you know, but it's got different regions of the way it behaves. And so yeah. there's a part of me that wonders if he'd have to like somehow change from being like having his Elantrian ness to being a forger to make that work, you know, mm -hmm. because I don't know if you could hold those both in con. It'd be like, a, you know, it'd be like a, a pewter arm being like, well, I want to be a Tin Eye, you know, like that's, I guess you can kind of do that. They probably work arounds, but shy kind of. Did the opposite? Did the sense. opposite? Yeah. I mean, this this is this is becoming like super speculative. Um, Shocking. Because because there, because there's a part of me that goes, why did she not make a stamp, an essence mark, that changes her into an Elantrian who is also a forger? Right. It just might not be possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. It might not be possible because because I think. Because uh, soul stamps work on on a plausibility principle, and it feels like it should be. If it is possible to be multiple of these things, then it feels like it should be that it should be more plausible to be forger who is also an Elantrian. And so, for her to give up the forgery to become an Elantrian, I think suggests that she could have only been one, mm -hmm. because if she could have mm -hmm. been more. It should have been easier to be more. Ultimately, I think she's like tricking like her entire soul, like where she's from. And like, it, it's yeah, hard to do that 
for two different things, right? Because connection to the land is yeah. relevant on cell. Yeah. So, so I think right because I, I of, think you can really only be from one place mm-hmm. as be- far as the magic is concerned. Because of like Dominion being a part of that magic system, you need like a realmatic VPN if you want to change magic systems. You need the that moon are scepter. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we we know that the moon scepter acts as a as a Rosetta Stone for mm-hmm. Salish magics. Whatever, Whatever that, that means. <laughs> I do think going from a Langtrian to forgery would be easier because the, in order to do. Forger to Elantrian, like Shy needed like an external source of investiture because Elantrians are power. just so much more naturally invested than a random forger. I wonder mm-hmm. if you could build like a a my pawn like booster like a Lantris has, like a Lantris serves for mm-hmm. Aeon Door, you know, Ooh. and then you could do the same thing. We do know that um there are power boosting symbols in forgery like aeon reo but forgers don't haven't figured that out yet i was almost wondering if you could make aeons to essentially have the same effect as a soul stamp i feel like that should theoretically be possible almost certainly Mm -hmm. yeah and or can do anything if you know how to do it Mm -hmm. i was leaning a little bit like the other way of like i do think Like, because you need the external investiture in order to use a soul stamp to become an Elantrian, I do see, like, why that's more difficult. But I also think forgery as a magic system is very about changing things and people into other versions of themselves. Like, if you do need a magic VPN, like, forgery is sort of already suited to doing that Mm -hmm. in a way that I think Aeondor does not necessarily have that same mechanical focus even though it might be possible to achieve the same effects with aeon door like that's forgery's whole thing yeah sort of a vibe i do think that like they're probably of the sellish magic since we're aware of like the two best like you're not able to turn yourself I guess you kind of turn yourself into a dead Elantrian with the potions. But like, <laughs> you know, the blood seals are like probably, it's probably not easy to make yourself into Elantrian with a blood seal. Yeah. Like, get Hoid to have the weird shaped bones and he's just like, that's, yeah. that's my Hoid Which, impression as a duck whore. <laughs> is that the sad duck think, whore makes? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I do think whatever methodology Hoid is using, like, I don't think he's, he would be using Aeondor itself to hack everything. Like, he would be using external sources and being an Elantrian is kind of his back door into all of the Selish magic systems and then he's just going to shenanigans from there mm-hmm. perhaps mm-hmm. yeah it, it, at yeah. the very least it's a good power source that he can use draw on mm-hmm. theoretically well, how, yeah. how you do that as an Elantrian yeah. off world I don't the know planet of Lumar uh, yeah, it, I, worked I great. Come, it worked great <laughs> I have come to accept that she must have something set up for herself that just works for him too on that ship. But yeah, yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do think Hoyd has enough access and knowledge of just like the underlying mechanics of things like connection and identity that he doesn't necessarily need a specific magic system to be able to do that. It's sort of like a tool that he uses to hack his way into a lot of different magic systems, but yeah, he would it kind still of... probably need a way to manipulate like mm-hmm. the connection and the identity and, and whatever other spiritual attributes are necessary for him to achieve whatever goals he's going after. But yeah, I imagine he can accomplish similar things with, you know, he doesn't have ferrochemy as far as we know, but something like ferrochemical fortune. Mm-hmm. And, and as as he would with like, I don't know, Aeon Door. Mm-hmm. God, he's Man, so I just thought overpowered. Of a... As a misborn yeah. and an Elantrian. Like, that's that's insane. But he can't kill anybody. <laughs> big limitation. Yes. That's a big limitation for sure. It reminds me of the, like, YouTuber who uses Premiere Pro for every, like, all of their audio editing and all of that because it's the program that they know, even though they... you saying Never me? Mind. This is a bad metaphor. Are you, are you, are you, are you <laughs> talking about <laughs> Eric? No. personally <laughs> called out here. <laughs> This is a bad metaphor. I take it back. Cut this out. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Alex is just like, I just want to stab a 
knife into Eric. <laughs> Freaking give that to patrons. No, yeah. this was yeah, this is mostly just like the the overlap of like Adobe products being able to do lots of different stuff, but you pick the one that you know how to use best, even if it's not necessarily the best yeah. tool for the job. Oh, that's not a bad like I, metaphor. Like I do that's this okay. with Photoshop where I'm like, I know this isn't what Photoshop's supposed to do, but I know Photoshop really well, so I'm gonna make Photoshop yeah. do it, even yeah. though I should be using this other tool God, instead. Yeah. Like I think that Hoyd has his realmatic program that he knows how to do the stuff in, even if if you were an expert in one of the others, he could do it simply. I like that. Whatever. High favor. No, no, anyway. That was a good. That was a good. I think that was a good analogy, Alex. <laughs> so, okay. I, I might leave it in. I might leave it. In. Okay, we can leave it in. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, if, if it stays high, everyone. If it doesn't stay high, patrons. Oh, I'll edit it so that I cut <laughs> out it, all the high patrons and just yeah, fine. It's fine. No, fine. leave those in. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it in. Right, Patreon's yeah. only a dollar. Come on, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> we we actually have been posting actual outtakes. So like, there yeah. are some fun outtakes, like our Sunlit Man ones. Did you did you, oh, did yeah, you no, like I... editing that episode? <laughs> I always do outtakes when I edit because I love our patrons and Pete. Also, <laughs> oh, you guys say stupid oh, stuff that I need other people to be able right to understand. To my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is just oh you're torturing me I'll torture you right back at him exactly the Herald should have fought back <laughs> wow tell that to town <laughs> on praise all right this next one is there a specific reason as to why Hoyd cannot skip but Nomad can Brandon yes there is a specific reason for that I'll get into it someday Let's just say the skipping started because of a certain event that I probably won't write a book to talk about, but you will get an answer to that someday, I hope. So it's a raffo, but a raffo with a little bit of a promise. I've heard that before, Brandon. I have a theory. <laughs> Let's hear it. Right. Uh, I think what happened was... Um, so, so we are in the period between Stormlight and Sunlit Man. Sure. And Ox is fine, and yep. Sigzo finds himself in some kind of a bad situation. Maybe the Night Brigade is involved, maybe someone else is involved. And in the act of protecting itself, the Dawn Shard consumes most of Ox, but not just for fun, but for the purpose of getting itself and Sigzil out of whatever bad situation they were in. And that just ends up being like a teleportation somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that. Do you think Ox has enough BEUs to get Sigzil <laughs> anywhere? Because that's that was my only caveat was I don't know how many BEUs a Spren has. But... Uh, <laughs> so let's let's get out the charts. <laughs> don't you want to get not. the charts and go through the math, Alex? You are probably correct. He probably doesn't have enough. Maybe. Um, maybe oh God, I hate this. Um, <laughs> like depending on the level of the oath, you have more at your disposal. So, so here's the thing. That's true. Like it, an efficiency it, thing. Yeah. It could. So Ox has very little left in. Like by the time we get to him in Sunlit Man. Mm -hmm. And that is enough to power like a little bit of flight, essentially, which is not a lot of a lot of BEUs, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one shard blades worth of investiture. <laughs> but you know. Yeah, but so so the thing that I'm trying to work through as I as I say words and stall for time. Great. Is there a world in which the Dawn Shard consuming Ox is a little bit like uh, like a nuclear reaction? Where like you are not kind of think of it as, as the difference between uh, like burning coal and breaking the the carbon atoms, the carbon molecules in coal. And like the vast difference in energy output that you get out of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder I if just if at the end when Ox gives up the last of himself, that is more akin to burning coal. And so you get just a little bit of investiture. But when 
the first incident happened, the Dion Shard broke down all the investiture molecules, if, as it were. <laughs> and, and you got so much more out of the majority of Ox. I Maybe. couldn't believe that. I don't know how that that's how that works. Though. Well, I, I will say I will not laugh at the idea of investiture molecules because shard blades got to be made out of something. Uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> if you're alloying them or, or god metals in general, but uh, mm, maybe I don't know. It, it, it could be. I, I feel like Brand's going to do what Brand's going to do when it comes to on shards. So I don't know. If, yeah. I don't know how much mechanics we can apply to them. Mm-hmm. But I, I like the idea of like. The Dawn Shard was used for a teleportation effect. And so that got burned into Sigzel's spirit web. Yep. So now he can skip. Something like that. Sure. I I could see that. There is like a very old wob that where I feel like Brandon was kind of like hinting that one day he might have Hoyd be able to skip because there's a time when he's talking about how he travels from planet to planet. And he's like, there's this thing that at some point I might want him to be able to do that would help with that. But for now he's using perpendicularities essentially was what he said. Interesting. Mm. And so I feel like it's possible that at some point Hoyd will figure it out, but you know, we'll see. There could also be something like the Don shard interacting with a magic system that we didn't see. Like, and mm. the fact that like, you're not supposed to have powers with a Don shard. Mm-hmm. Cause like, Maybe it does weird stuff like that. Like maybe Sigzel yeah. ran into like a normal teleportation magic on a world somewhere and somehow got it. And because he was also holding the Dawn Shard, like it just kind of went haywire because you're not supposed to. Like yeah, this is the thing that like him. they've warned Risen about mm-hmm. with all that. Like mm-hmm. it could be something like that too. Yeah, that's going to be some interesting stuff whenever we whenever we yeah. just yeah. right after it, the it, night blood may never actually yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm still holding out that he's gonna tell us the zane story someday because he said he would <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. fine you, you got one uh, question Del- on the spoiler stream but not that one got another one coming up i'm just gonna submit the same questions probably <laughs> get another one <laughs> nobody's upvoting a zane question i'll do it for you but the no. dear fans <laughs> will upvote the zane question because i am trash so i <laughs> watch, watch secrets and snake us yeah <laughs> Is there a Zane tie-in in Secrets in the Stained Class? <laughs> we we can tell you later. I want this answer. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I'll, I'll tell, tell, tell you later. You later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's more accurate to say that there is a feather head cannon yes. that ties into Secrets in the Stained Glass yes. that then ties into Zane. Zane. Yes. The, head, the head cannon about the Let's Play. That's, there, that's there's there's so Straff well. Venture stuff. Okay. Yes. Uh, we, are, we are a few levels of head cannon <laughs> deep. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm, well, I'll, okay, I'll just say, because this isn't actually, like, necessarily spoilers for Secrets of State Glass or anything, but my character's a coin shot in that show, and he's also a venture, and I'm like, what if somehow he, it was possible that he was Zane Spike, and I need to, the details about how Zane got his spike to figure out if this is plausible. Okay. There you go. Well, that's, that's really fun. That's my fun it, headcanon, fun. but I need some more deets about how it happened, because Brandon's, Brandon's always been like, whole, I'll tell you the story eventually, it's an, maybe. It's an interesting story. Uh, but I yeah it's like 2016 he's like someday I'll tell you guys and I'm like that he's fully <laughs> forgotten by now he's totally he's fully forgotten, forgotten, I'm sure. it's with the medallions yeah. essay that's that's prior to Karen like that's a there's a real possibility that went into the great beyond and nobody knows like <laughs> what happened Pass to the beyond but, yeah. we'll never yeah. it's with Ben and Ellen they're having a fun time over I, there I still I've have got a nasty venture cousin that you can borrow if you need a coin <laughs> shot to back into that spike is there a more quintessential feather thing than to come up with an OC that ends in a horrible way? Like you're just like I want what I want for my character is to become a spike in the Zane worst Venture. Possible outcome, please. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. This we have another <laughs> exchange from Questioner. Yep. Oh, thank you, Questioner. What would happen if a misborn ingested anti lorosium or anti atium, <laughs> okay. assuming they don't explode? Brandon, if you are not highly invested yourself and you get the anti investiture, it's not going to be a fun time. You won't explode, but it will kill you almost assuredly. 
not a fun time, but not an exclusively not a fun time. Just a regular old not a fun time. Maybe a little like pouring molten metal down your throat. So, a I like I, more investiture molecules. It's like boom, sweet. They knew <laughs> this show. I, I don't get this wub. To me, this I is don't weird. Get this wub either. No, I'm like if they burn it, maybe something happens. But like, it doesn't a hundred percent click for me why it would be like pouring molten metal down your throat like picking if it's that case why it's not picking up anti loracium like causing your hand to like, uh, i mean presumably it would it would but like i just it doesn't, I, I guess i don't think i guess i just don't think that that is consistent with how we see god metals behave i guess yeah but or how we see anti-investiture yeah. behave and i think my issue with how this is questioned is the premise is if a Mistborn would yeah. do this, and mm. then Brandon's like, well, if you're not highly invested, <laughs> then it's just going on something else. Like, what? Well, yeah. What's and then there's like weird? The, the part of me that's like the Mistborn part with the anti ATM, like, that's a preservation magic system, although they do have a little bit of ruin in there. Like, I just don't. <laughs> It's very confusing to me <laughs> to consider this. Have and fun I don't... putting this on the copper mind. <laughs> yeah, this is a wob. I'm like, I'm going to ignore this until yeah. like, we get any sense. more contact. There's, there's also the the assumption that anti god metals exist, which yeah, that's that's, we a, that's just a thing. Don't know. Like, I, I think it's reasonable, right? Because if anti investiture exists, then anti investiture can maybe change states. Yeah, yeah. same like, way that investiture yeah. can. Mm-hmm. But like, we don't know that. Yeah. No. This is the we need like a wob. of solid anti investiture versus yes. like the light gaseous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We need a wob. Because if black, anything, like, it should be more stable. Yeah. That's my belief is that like that's how we've understood the states of investors that the, the solid is rigid and it does kind of like one thing and it's not, I don't know. It's just, like, yeah, I don't get this. Why <laughs> would I don't know if you necessarily like say, let's say you were a ferrochemist and you had an anti-god metal bracer okay there's no necess there's n- <laughs> no reason to say that you could ferrochemically charge that right i think you might just explode that i might see exploding yeah, like, yeah I, I think a, it, it is you're you. trying to put investiture into mm. an anti-investiture yeah. okay. thing okay what what sort of investiture is the investor that ends up in a metal mine, Eric? Is it of preservation? Is it of ruin? <laughs> what? Yes. Like, we just need to like we, we need point. so many more, so much stop. more information. I, I, I'm, more, I'm more saying this as how, how about let me let me rephrase. There's no indication that that god metal could even be reacted to with regular ferrochemy. Right, like maybe, but maybe not. Like it doesn't have yeah. to necessarily. Have, yeah, yeah. Like, well, can you can you charge if you had an anti like an anti iron bracer? Could you charge that? Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like anti matter iron. It's yeah. anti matter. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah point it's anti matter. You have a whole it, other but, set of problems. <laughs> oh you just touch it very gently, just a little poke. No, uh, it it will react with. If you have to do it in vacuum, and it's yeah. No, you can't. You can. I I know that there are problems. <laughs> I, I I'm feel just like saying... we are staring into the abyss of this question, and it's slowly driving everyone insane. And I'm maybe the only one who's made my wisdom saving throw and been like. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just here. saying it's it's not even clear that a Mistborn could burn these, right? <laughs> no, that doesn't need not to ne- be the no, case. No. Like, not maybe. necessarily. Like, do you, can a fuse draw in anti void light? That seems bad. That seems like you don't want to do that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because it's still odium's light. Like, yeah. it would still be preservation in ruins investiture. Yeah, just opposite, like. Yeah, like so, Racium still conducts it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You imagine you're like, I got you some Loracium, and someone's like, oh, heck yeah. And they like <laughs> swallow it. <laughs> and you die. Yeah. Fun gag gift for your friend who almost <laughs> wanted to be a Mistborn. <laughs> this got him. Look, Discord is going to do some weird <laughs> guys. He's just going to be like, hey, I made. I made Loracium for all of you. There you go. And it just kills them. 
Well, I like it. Anyway, uh, uh, Alex. Anyway, save us. Mm. Uh, from questioner, <laughs> but also paraphrased. So uh, we get: Could you awaken a chasm fiend as a lifeless with just one breath, or would it require more? Brandon said it would probably require more. Uh, Questioner follows up, and would a lifeless chasm fiend still function normally because they use spread in order to support their weight? Um, and Brandon says, yeah, it wouldn't be able to make the Nahel bond work, so it would collapse. So no huh. zombie chasm fiends for everybody. Sad, sad day for the cause. No here. zombie chasm fiends without assistance. <laughs> yeah, true. Like, I, I think you could give them like more juice and be like, OK, like you're going to behave like I bet you could figure out a way yeah. to do it. You, but you it was like, some weak runners kidding. to like lash them up a little bit. So like, <laughs> they're not, not even that, like if awakening can turn a tapestry into a functioning arm, mm -hmm. I think pump enough breath into there. It, it'll all work. <laughs> You could probably enhance the strength of the materials. It would. You yeah. probably want to. You probably want to think that out though before you reawaken a chasm fiend, only for it to collapse in agony. But like, <laughs> you know, probably wouldn't feel agony. I mean, I how so conscious the lifeless are are yeah. kind of conscious. There are. Yeah. We don't. We don't really know. It's not a guy to keep them in the dark. Yeah, lifeless sure. are more aware than you think. This is a very warbreaker. <laughs> There's a lot of warbreaker <laughs> illusions in this episode. <laughs> Head to our very active Warbreaker channel to discuss more. Uh, <laughs> this is probably a thing that people have asked before. Are there any other sort of like sentient life forms on Nalthus? And if so, do they have breaths? Like ooh. like animals? Oh, sentient. Like if you like if you had I guess chasm fiend aren't like uh, I don't think we have any evidence of that. No, because I'm just so I'm just small, trying to think though. like, are there any creatures other than humans on Nalthus that have breaths and like, would their breaths be demonstrably different? If so? we don't know any of that, I get believe that like, if like other sapient creatures were on Nalthus and like gained breath, <laughs> like a dragon, do... like if you had a dragon that lived that was like native to Nalthus. Would a dragon wow. have like a dragon sized breath? There, sort of a thing. There is sweet. like an old wob where someone, like back when we were trying to understand how magic systems work, where people were asking, like, if a Skadrian moved to Nalthus, would their children like eventually have breaths? And I believe the answer was yes. So, like, yeah. maybe you could establish like a lineage of dragons Ooh. that did eventually end up with a breath. But I don't know. Like, the dragons are, dragons are big magic. So maybe yeah. not. <laughs> Interesting. Dragon might be a special case. I mean, I guess we do have like the returned breath is one breath that's mm -hmm. very powerful. So yeah, there, there kind is of kind of a precedent for breath, individual breaths of different sizes. Sure, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we know there's some variation, yeah. like in normal breaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing to me here is that it is the implication that a lifeless cannot form on a hell bond or I think a spren bond i think that's what he's saying essentially i mean yeah i don't think that a regular lifeless could or i don't know why it would you know what i mean because like the nahel bond is a symbiotic bond in some way yeah. it's like i see it not being a value but i don't know but like a possibility versus wanting but the, to like, do things i can kind of see where like a lifeless like it, like a lifeless chasm fiend is not a living chasm fiend. So the, the spread that would form a Nahil bond with a mandra, we know the name of those spread. Mm -hmm. a, a mandra like would not see a lifeless chasm fiend like and see a chasm fiend. It would be like this like weird, like invested thing. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, like a, a bond is not going to form there because like, mm -hmm there's no mechanism for a bond to be there. Sure. It's not, yeah. It's not. Whether or not, like, you could hack, like, and form something like a Nahil bond. Probably could. To All right, here's a question. Purpose. What if <laughs> endowment returned a chasm fiend? <laughs> <laughs> Divine breath chasm fiend. Let's go. <laughs> we do know it would be difficult for return to bond spread, so we would have run into the same issue. 
Hmm. I think that's probably like some it, it would be like a similar Dog issue for a, for different Dog people. <laughs> Dog I, wonder Dog mission, I wonder what mission endowment would give a chasm fiend that it called past. <laughs> like, you better get Dalinar this time. <laughs> <laughs> get on it, Timmy. <laughs> Maybe that divine breath is so strong that like the the shard blade, like you're so invested. That would that be insane. Blade. Like you swing at the leg and it just goes clang. clang. You're like, oh, <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> skin's all shard now. blade actually, effectively. If being a returned lets you like see colors better, but a chasm fiend is already a big shrimp that can see shrimp colors. Oh, no. <laughs> what happens to the colors that the chasm fiend You see is? infinity. <laughs> yeah. The extra like, shrimp color. They just have, like have a direct line into the spiritual realm at all times. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they know the shrimping. spiritual oh. integrity of colors very well. <laughs> 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 Which I'm joking, but that's is that kind of a thing? The metals integrity. have spiritual integrity, but color yeah. is also special. It is. It, color, it has, it's got flavor. The sibling kind of never says, heard sort of. the term spiritual integrity. I have a don't want to know, Alex. I have a whole theory <laughs> metal, about metal metal spiritual, spiritual integrity. integrity. Don't want to know. Here I've, we go. With, I guess <laughs> why they have get similar effects across magic systems. Dark and terrible <laughs> in the abyss. 20, I don't want to know no. anymore. <laughs> the spiritual integrity of steel is about pushing things away. That's honestly what I think it is. Is it's like a cross? Like you know how steel <laughs> works across magic systems? Like it's in Fabrials, it's in yeah, Alamancy. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That's it's in um, Aethers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, back <laughs> to... Just like, you weren't sure. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's like, I need to go. How quickly can I cut them off? <laughs> <laughs> just, I come on this show and I learn things against my will. <laughs> this is your Herald torture. <laughs> really is. It is. All right, Evgeny. Let's go to this oh, next one. No. Oh, no. Oh, yes. There are so many dragon ones. <laughs> we, we truly are in hell. I, I did group them. I did group them. Just for you guys. <laughs> okay. They were really right. quick one after another, though. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, people people were on, on this thing. <laughs> I guess that was his big thing in our interview, was like dragon stuff. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just learn a lot. Gates are opened. Yeah. yeah. Dragon questions back on the menu, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about dragons, or in this case, not a dragon. Uh, questioner asks, is Lyft entirely human? Uh, and Brandon says, that's a wonderful question. I would say yes, but the modifications that were made to her make her kind of a unique version of a human. If Hoyd is still human, Lyft is still human, if that makes sense. And you shouldn't be reading too much into that <laughs> Hoyd. It's just that he's had so many things happen to him over the years and so many changes to his spirit web and things like that. I would say, yes, he is still human and Lyft is as well, but there have been modifications made. So to give some context for why someone would be asking this question is because in our Brandon interview, Brandon talked about the dragon life cycle and how they're born in humanoid form, which later we'll see is human, just to be clear. And so <laughs> there was thought that if the dragons are born human and eventually turn into dragon, well, what if the thing Lyft's scared of is that she will turn into a dragon? <laughs> Oh, that's the connection. I was just like, yeah. why lift though? Like, the, why is, why is, it, is Aiden a dragon? Because like maybe like, when you like get through puberty, then you become a dragon or something. Yeah, and it's her like fear of changing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing and then it's up, like, hey, sort I'm of a thing dragon. was kind of the impetus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and anyway, go go listen to our uh, Wob episodes on that, where Jess goes through a long argument of why she hates that theory, but then she just listed things in favor of that theory which is very funny <laughs> it's like ah, no so anyway she's not this is an interesting wob in my opinion because like we know that there are a lot of different kinds of humans yeah like th there's many different lineages of humans across the cosmere like preservation and ruin made their own but humans have kind of spread and so like human on one planet does not exactly equal human on another planet but if you look at them both yes these are both human they are under the same ideal of humanity and spiritual realm but there's differences there 
And so, yeah, Lyft and Hoyt are weird humans. They're unique humans, but they're still humans. This... There was an interesting mm -hmm. question elsewhere about uh, whether someone, I think a mortician is what the question asked, would be able to like tell one strain of humans from another. Um, and I don't think the answer was particularly satisfying, but, but I thought the question was interesting. Like, mm -hmm. can you, are there things you can look at physical, cognitive, spiritual that will tell you all oh, these two people are not from the same planet? And I, I think that answer has to be yes. Like you think about how the Scavrians were modified to survive better in the ash environment in the mm -hmm. past. Like that seems to me like you could look at one of them and you'd be like, oh, okay, here are some actual physical or biological oh, Those are processes. some weird lungs. Yeah, like they, they can breathe ash at a much higher <laughs> content than anybody else. What? Like, yeah, this person is freakishly tall, must be from Roshar. Well, yeah, or... Well, how, what is going on with their hair? Like, still, not, we'll <laughs> That's never a good know. question, we'll though. Never know, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think about how many different things you can find out from, like, humans that are all from Earth, from, like, their yeah. bone record and stuff, yeah. and tell about, like, their lifestyle. So I'm like, you have to be able to see, mm. like, even if it's not, like, a DNA innate thing, like, just living on another planet has to, like, do stuff to the Different gravities of your stuff, body yeah. and, or, and like yeah. diet even you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah like eating eating the crabs all the day versus you know mm. whatever they're eating on Nalthus. i imagine good food i could see there being like some spiritual that's resume though, right like that's like oh, yeah. oh here's like preservation stuff <laughs> and like oh, you could yeah. magically mm. determine it as well yeah, yeah potentially yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, like sure. Herdazians have like stone on their knuckles and stuff, <laughs> or on their on their nails and stuff. Like, well, yeah, are, you're like, I'm starting to think this isn't a rich, or this is an Escadrian. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, you don't wow. know? Maybe some Southerners. Why do they have 4D teeth? Mm, weird. <laughs> I th what this question reminded me of though is actually some very old questions about our steel mm. inquisitors, human. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time, Brandon was like, they're not. I think he said they couldn't have children with regular people, right? Like, I feel like oh, that God, was... A, I, I don't that. remember. I'd have to do yeah. research. He's also said a long time ago that he doesn't consider Hoyd to be human. Yeah, so I think that this is getting along that same line of like, okay, yes. what does it mean to be human? Like, they're, they're highly modified, but like, oh. like yeah. I, I still think Marsh is a person, but is a highly Certainly. modified person, right? Hoy yeah. is a ship of Theseus, sort of a human. <laughs> and like, yeah. and when you, and like, if you look at human more like philosophically, like what is it, a person who lives forever and is unkillable, are they, are they having a human experience? Sure. You know, like, yeah. yeah. Like, I can, I can see it a little bit more with Steel Inquisitors actually, because like, if you look at other hemallergic creations like Chandra or Coloss, like, those pretty clearly are not human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even does... though Steel Inquisitors like are visibly closer to human, like I think there is still, okay, they have been altered in such a way that mm -hmm. we consider them different. They've yeah. crossed the event horizon of humanity. <laughs> I think he's even said like their brains and their organs like shift around the spikes, the spikes in various yeah. ways too. To like, mm -hmm. like, and like that is, that's a physical biological change. You know, like you can make an argument there, but <laughs> mm -hmm. they're looking at this corpse. It's like, man, can, is this guy human? It's like, well, they have giant steel spikes in his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> this this yeah. fossil is so weird. It's giant, all these giant spikes and it's so spooky. I don't even want to think about this Gadrian fossil record, Eric. They're all, <laughs> they're, they're young Earth creationists and they're right. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's that is true. true. They're all young Earth creationists and they're correct. Maybe Ruin and Preservation just created a fossil record. Ooh, no, they did. Fossils? <laughs> they did. Yeah, they did. They <laughs> created fossil fuels for the future. Oh, I guess I, that's true, right? Well, did, but did they, they, they did clarify? Did planet. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It's always so fit. That like must that. be super it, fun as being a Skadrian geologist. <laughs> no, like I would I, 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 <laughs> It must be so bad to be a scientist in the Cosmere. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Just we, like just, God did it. It's like, yeah, I mean mm -hmm. that that's that happens. A lot that's of what's going, like mm -hmm. some worlds do have fossils because 
Vasher has one because yeah, yeah, Nalthus presumably does. Yeah, I wonder where he got that one. He's like not Rishar, not Nalthus. Like he had to go to an old planet. No, no it, could, it could have been Nalthus. No, he says, and he says in there that Nalthus is too young. Yeah. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Maybe Yolan. Maybe Yolan. I don't Maybe. Know how they get there? Weird yeah, fade fossils. Fade fossils. <laughs> fade fossils. It's, it's a fossilized uh, camu keck. <laughs> does ask brandon does a fossilized tamukex still, you still make calls <laughs> uh to the audience and feather in case you don't know a tamukex is a i phone. know what a tamukex okay is. i just continue, continue. I, I said the audience as well it's a special bone that shodel have and you let's you that's also a track. phone yeah the yeah. bone phone if you will bone phone, bone yeah. phone. Let's go to this next one. <laughs> All right. We've got another dragon question for you. Can dragons only be born through biological means or someone can someone become dragons through another means? Ooh. And Brandon says, the way dragons exist in the Cosmere is that they are a race. Dragons have this thing where they actually, in the Cosmere, dragons breed in their human form. For instance, they have both forms and give birth in their human form. And the dragon form is separate. They raise families and have children as humans, and they consider both an equal form to them. They're both dragon forms. One is just human shaped and the other is giant reptile shaped, but they're both <laughs> dragons. Yes, agreed. And I think this questioner is also getting at could cultivation make lift into yeah. a dragon? Yeah. I think yeah. that's also yeah. possible. The problem is people are asking Brandon questions about dragon lift, but they're not actually saying dragon lift. So he isn't necessarily answering the question no, in no, the no, way we, that they we, want to. No, no, no. When we get to the sequence of four no. wobs, we will have the definitive answer. Don't worry. Yes. Like, we, oh we, we have but it. I just, it is a little funny to see like Brandon is not fully aware of the real question that's being asked <laughs> underneath. He all of these. In our we, yeah. We've been well trained to not be too direct with him. Like you, <laughs> need, to ask, you need to ask that's around true. You the, the yeah. perimeter. Yeah, oh, no, you, you got to get under his guard. Yeah, yeah, because if he sees you have an agenda, <laughs> he'll just straight up wrath of you. Because like, yeah. oh, you're theorizing. I don't want to ruin theorizing. I'm like, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, I don't uh, say no to theories. I never Sanders. say no. Like, I need something to tell people that they're wrong, though, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. saying lift is dragon. You and I both know she's not. <laughs> Please let give me ammo against them. I, I just want to comment to the maybe five people in our Discord chat and YouTube comments total who were dead convinced that the humanoid form of dragons were Shodel. It's good to be right. <laughs> so I'm totally right. <laughs> Look, it feels good. <laughs> it would have made sense. I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't totally. Impossible. It wasn't totally out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you've read. If you have read the pseudo canonical The Traveler, Frost definitely didn't look like a Shodel. So <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I wonder if they can form into other shapes or they just have these two forms, though. It you know? seems like it's just these two. Yeah. The that's what that this question, question seems to imply. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they have forms. a specific human they can look like. Not not like general shape shifting. They can't like mm -hmm. turn into a giant rat and be like, hey. I'm Not unless the sorceress puts a curse on that. That's true. Yeah. Because Grace is not here, I do have to point out how dragon romance novel this whole setup oh, is. Yeah. Yes. So much. I don't know that Brandon realized how much romance novel fodder he has built into the Cosmere dragon race, but wow. The potential is exponential. The hot Fabio <laughs> dragon. It's just exactly. In human yeah. form. Like, hey. And then, yeah. then they can have the the magic carpet ride, but it's just the person on the the giant dragon. Brandon like, and what and like uh, unintentional sexual tension. Name of oh, an iconic oh, pair. That's so true. <laughs> Very good. So this next one: Are there any other dragons on Roshar other than cultivation? Brandon, there have been. There might be some. How about this? You shouldn't be looking for dragons among the characters of the Stormlight Archives. So I would say Lift Dragon utterly destroyed. Supremely Gone. dead. Supremely yeah. dead. That's pretty definitive. Very definitive. Unless going on turn. with 16. <laughs> Good old 16. No. Put your comments um, below if you remember 16. From so Rhythm we know 16 is Scadrian. 
That's true. Put your comments below Do if you we? don't care about yes. 16. We have a lot <laughs> about that, yes. Does not does not exclude the possibility that he is a dragon from Skadrio, <laughs> but Skadrio. I think that makes it unlikely. Yeah. Right. I think Skadrio makes sense, though, because he doesn't need anything, so I'm like, okay, bend alloy, or whatever the ferrochemical metal is with calories. There's a lot of Skadrians on Roshar just kicking it, huh? They're getting ready. They're getting ready. It used to be a great place to be. Yeah. So neat. We got yeah. ferric chemists running around. We got ghost bloods. There's too many Skadrians over here. <laughs> Stay on your own planet. <laughs> They're just everywhere. <laughs> the the Skadrians were like, man, our solar system just doesn't have enough space. We need to go to the one with the 10 gas giants and three other <laughs> planets. And we need 13 pl- planets. 13 <laughs> planets. They, they, they'll they try and make three more so then there's 16 planets and that's the mm, grand yeah, yeah, yeah. that's actually what 16's goal do, is actually well, do they have do any other planets have moons so they got three moons of Rishar so if you mm. add all those up that's 16 that's 16 ooh Aiden Alcium's grand design <laughs> <laughs> was 16 important before Aiden Alcium shattered we don't know. Oh, that's never been um, answered. None of that numerology no, makes any sense yeah, to he me. He can't be important. He can't be important. Oh, sorry. They're talking about the man 16. I was like, he can't. No, the before number. Aiden no, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. the number. didn't exist. But uh, <laughs> no, I like, see. Did Aiden Alzium shatter into 16 parts because 16 is important to the Cosmere? Or is 16 important to the Cosmere because Aiden Alzium shattered into 16 yeah. parts? Or, I don't know the answer to that. We may never know the answer to that part. This may be pure philosophy, but I'm fascinated. <laughs> is, or is four important to the Cosmere, Ian? And four, four is made 16. Yeah. I think that's a good question. Maybe yeah. Maybe we get to ask that. Yeah. It's kind of rough of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, mm-hmm. the numerology of the Cosmere is so unimportant, in my opinion. Lucy Goosey. Uh, so Lucy Goosey. Mm-hmm. Ian, do this last dragon question. Questioner asks, is Vasher a dragon? And Brandon says, no, he's not. Keep searching. Which, <laughs> very clear. Like, Bre- Vasher, obviously human, returned. Yeah, right in his head. Maybe, maybe he we forgot. We would know if he's a maybe dragon. He maybe he doesn't know. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't know he came to the office. <laughs> I, I don't know what this question is about. Like, why? It's not true, Ian. You don't have to be upset maybe, about maybe, it. Maybe, you much. know, like, like, I thought you liked secret dragons, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like the lifeless thing we're talking about. Maybe being a returned, like, you're, it's just, it's just a little different when if you die and then you're returned like that you know i don't know like if being a return you become your ideal self if i was a dragon it would not be the human well but it's not it's not your ideal equal forms they consider them to be equal i mean it's a little bit your idealized version of yourself Mm, and it's it's the societal idea of perfection you can do mind tricks on yourself and change what you look like because Vash yes, doesn't. but that requires like knowledge and training. By default, it's the society's idea of perfection that shapes you. Well, you can make the argument that you've in, that you've internalized society's. Yeah, ideals. it's the internalization you know. of ideals of beauty. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's hard to say. But... I'll just say there is a reference to dragons in Warbreaker. Oh, yes, there is. is aware. Which is he why is <laughs> there's dragons then in mythology, which is why endowment should be a dragon. Uh, I think that we should interpret this wob as Brandon giving us full permission to scatter shot ask if every single character in the cosmere oh, is a dragon. That's how I read it. By that, yeah. by that keep searching and we uh, can the next we will narrow it down. Just people asking there's a, a dragon. number of characters on screen. It's like 5,000. We will get to all of them eventually. I don't know. It's not 5,000. I know that I'm not a WAB person, but honestly, (laughs) I cannot think of anything less satisfying (laughs) than asking if every single character in the Cosmere is a dragon, because then you make sure that you can never have an interesting reveal of a dragon because you just got it in an answer. And I'm like, oh, absolutely. When when has that stopped us before? I know. (laughs) This is like, I. Wobs are the least fun way to get information for okay. me. So sometimes Alex, I understand that they're like, if they're the, the only, only way to way. get that information, like if it's not going to be in the books, but there's some things that I'm like, you shouldn't just, if it's, it would, it would be cool. Really like the that town didn't break one. It. That was like, why is that a wob? <laughs> like that, that feels, was a, 
that was a misstep in my opinion yeah. uh but it is yeah. it is it is about the journey not about the destination <laughs> I, it's like, ah, you oh, picked the worst the journey. journey in O3. <laughs> I'm like, Brad, no, I didn't say Go. that. Yeah, Vivetta knows the most bad one, too. I, that's why I think for my questions, I have kind of settled on asking about like weird little specific crap that nobody else cares about. <laughs> like the Night Street like, Gang. Yeah. <laughs> Who did I, he kill, Brandon? <laughs> no one knows what, what we're talking I, about. <laughs> yeah, I feel like now that I'm kind of asking Wobs again, I'm like, I'm going to ask specific things that I know are too detailed about a character that I love yeah. that you're never going to get to in the books, yeah, right. but I do really want to know. Yeah. Look, maybe mm-hmm. he'll get to the Zane story when he, it, it'll Please be Mistborn Secret story. History 7. And it'll explain Lutha, the Zane story, and what's going on with Bloody Tan perfectly. And the Night Street Gang somehow guy. all fits together. Uh, I was thinking he finally writes the Orseer story. And then... uh, <laughs> there was an Orseer uh, story? He, he wanted to, he was like, he said that he had like, he found it to be an interesting character to kind of like rebel against his own god and father in some way. And he kind of in the era of the way of Kings and Warbreaker was like, I might write an or sir short story <laughs> and it never full materialized. Never yeah. Oh, he was yeah. also going to do like an ahoyed parallel story to Mistborn era one. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was that was idea. what was Hoy doing that. this entire yeah. time. I think he fit that into secret history, kind of. All, yeah, yeah. All of these questions got answered in Mistborn Birthright, and we're never going to see it. <laughs> game didn't get produced. Mistborn oh Birthright God. was early Final Empire. Alex. It was like second century yeah, Final come Empire on. <laughs> with Felix Fiddle Fathwell. Uh, hey, the Brandon. origin of myth cloaks. <laughs> if you're looking for things to turn into graphic novels. Do that. Mr. He he's not. They've, he's not looking for things. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> canceling them. Oh, no. So, no. Like, no. Basically, <laughs> don't do like a mainline story thing that you'll never be happy with in any version except <laughs> prose that you write. <laughs> do side stories that are just like, oh, that's a cool idea, but like, I don't want to devote time to that. But, but he, he did, did Dark, Dark One. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> and is giving up on that. Yeah. Like, I, and he's like, I, I want to write it instead. I like it yeah. too much. I, I, my request, Brandon, is never produce another graphic novel because I will never buy another one because this is it's such a mess. For for people who are unaware what Mistborn Birthright is, this was supposed point. to be... Wait, wait, who's unaware? <laughs> this was supposed to be a Mistborn video game that was going to come out and In 2013. never... Yes, it never actually manifested, but we do know that Brandon apparently wrote an original Mistborn story to be the I'm plot. Not of sure the how game. much was actually written for yeah. that. He was he, he intended meant to. to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was at least the intent. So mm-hmm. they like maybe Rest tried peace, to show Mistborn it off Birthright. once, one time, and then it never happened again. He said okay. that he saw some pushing and pulling like mechanics that they'd like kind of started to develop. I think, but that was about all we ever heard. It was really bad when we kept looking at E3 things and from Little Orbit and they all just like make mobile games and stuff. And then eventually the Mistborn Birthright was that domain was captured by porn companies and we had to change the (laughs) citation on the the compromise to not go directly to this one for a That's a true story. We we were citing porn sites on the wiki. (laughs) That's the Miss for birthright story here. (laughs) Not the kind of birthright I was looking into or for, but... Yeah, it's the one we got. This is what you got to enjoy, Cast for <laughs> the, the, the fandom war, fandom history. There, <laughs> this for birth row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like they didn't, they didn't announce it was like closed for like years after it was supposedly oh. supposed to come out. It's like, oh, this is yeah. so dead. Yeah, I yeah. got so sad when they were talking about some of the ideas that they had for the game because they would cite things like oh, we want to make it kind of like Dishonored and stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, you can't tell me this while you're telling me it's never going to happen because <laughs> Dishonored, but I'll actually Mistborn would be the coolest it, thing it, ever. It would be, yeah. That, that's the way to do it, I think. <sighs> Dishonored's oh, already yeah. so Mistborn-y. If mm-hmm. you're a Mistborn fan, go look up Dishonored stuff. It's your jam. I already know it. I already know all about Odium and Dishonor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the next pop. Jesus. Dishonor is Honor's Discord, actually. 
All right, we have a another paraphrase blog, Sir Watermelon, from Sir Watermelon. Yes, uh, that asks: Are spores and fabrials affected by god metals? And Brandon says, yes. The severity depends on which god metal. So this is a spiritual integrity wop. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I mean, yep. I'm also just like the word affected is very meaningless. So oh, absolutely, yeah. 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 If yeah. you if you smack a spore with a bar of lorasium, <laughs> has it been affected by it? No. Yes. Like, d- depending Look, on I, the density of the god metal, it will affect it more. Or less. I I get what you are saying. I don't think even Brandon is being that pedantic in his. No, I'm sure there's something else that he means here. But in terms of what it is, there's no way to tell. Oh no. no. Well, and what like effect of being affected by it is mm-hmm. and i would bet everything i own in my entire life that he has no idea and we will oh yeah. max, we will max get like one god metal yeah. like ether yeah. interaction at some point yeah. do not hold out hope in your heart for a chart i Maybe. want to know the atium iron alloy and how it affects crimson <laughs> spores good sir and oh i god. need to know how big of a red spike it turns into. <laughs> Dude, we're not going to get the normal metals, let alone the no, god metals. Not at all. But it's it's fun to think about. Like I can I can see like maybe cultivations god metal like does something with the growth of the Ooh, of yeah, the spore into sure. an aether or something sure, like sure, that. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe honors like affects the structure. Yeah, but but the god metals don't function like that cuz like racium's like I conduct investiture. That's yeah. what racium sounds like, actually. I don't know if you know. Well, so no, that's how it sounds. <laughs> I, I don't think... say th- anything about odium being the void and that translating to conducting investiture. I vacuum. Yes. No, I'm not. I'm not, that's that's not where I was going to go. Good. I think Brandon tries to make the spiritual integrity of metals <laughs> make sense where possible. Mm. That's why steel and iron have kind of a pushing and pulling effect in fabrial science. But I also think that he is not like that is not his primary goal. He's going to make as many metals make sense as he can, but he's not going to shy away from saying, yeah, this one's just weird. Or, you know, the idea, the, the integrity is some kind of like a weird property that's not obvious or whatever. And so... That's that's why I think Rasium conducts investiture, right? It's not because there's something intrinsic about passion or hatred or emotion that is conducive of investiture. Although I'm sure you can bullshit your way into some He's explanation. Absolutely. Really try. Maybe he will, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's it, it does the thing that it does because he wants it to do the thing that he wants it to do. My my favorite part of spiritual integrity of metals, though, is how like you have alimantic steel and the fabrial stuff, and then in fair chemistry, it's just like it stores physical speed. I'm like, okay, sure, <laughs> like okay, interesting. Yep, mm-hmm. sure. So you know, and it's also, not going to be perfect. You can awaken a steel mind and have a yeah. computer, and who knows why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, and, what does that mean? Yeah. In fact, it's not even going to be close to perfect. So don't hope for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he's doing rule of cool things, I think. Just cherish the winds, and that's the wind and truth. All right, let's let's save ourselves from this hell and go to a question asked by the Rosharan ecologist. Love Great. that. Um, paraphrased question. So you know, we've seen on Roshar creatures like chasm fiends evolve to have symbiotic relationships with spren. Are similar things possible between animals? And aethers. And Brandon says, paraphrasedly, this could happen. Yes. The Luhel bond is able to do these sorts of things. Oh, that's why these questions are paraphrased because they he, Brandon was doing lightning signings. So the mm-hmm. ones we have mm-hmm. audio for is like from the oh. spoiler QA. And there were a bunch of lightning signings where people could like get a thing signed and personalized and uh, ask like a question. So I think that's where these are coming from. Son of a bitch. I had access to a lightning signing through a friend of mine and opted not to go because they said no questions. 
Turn you around. failed us. Uh, that's the question. When has, that stopped, <laughs> when has that stopped Brandon before? He said he wasn't going to do signing lines anymore, and here but, he is doing signing per, lines per, perpetually that. for these these signing things. Maybe 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 not lightning signing, but because there was a lightning signing and then there was the signing signing, so like maybe those were a little but different. But I think the signing signing was only for like the golden tickets or whatever. I, I don't know, but I, I'm just saying mm. it's my impression that. Brandon went long on every single lightning signing. I, I, it's uh, not surprising in the slightest. I, I should not trust him anymore. I don't know why I make <laughs> yeah. this mistake. Anyway, every time. sorry, sorry. Just wanted to explain that. No question for the record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The previous question about awakening a chasm fiend called the relationship between the chasm fiends and nah the Mandras a Nahel bond. Yeah. Was that yes. was that a mistake? I know. So that okay, that so actually is a Nahel bond. Yeah, because yeah. like that's bond to like the divine, basically. So like, like a, a, unclear if it's like a bond to the cognitive or a bond to the spiritual. Whereas there's like weird like cognitive spiritual things being transferred across that new hell bond. There's like physical transfer happening. So it's like it's like giving water to the aether. Is what's traveling versus giving like consciousness in the physical realm. Yeah. yeah. Although, yeah, it's kind of weird. We we got a clarification a couple of years ago. We always treated Nahel Bond and the Radiant Bond like they were synonymous. And Brandon has since clarified that the Radiant Bond is like a type of Nahel Bond, but there are many mm -hmm. types. Yeah. Like the Sion uh, Bond is technically a Nahel Bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I understand it. But I understand that this is more complicated than I thought it was. I'm leaving so, the blanket. Yeah. So this, basically, this is saying like the Lou Hellbond like can also do the this sort of thing that the Nah Hellbond can do. Mm -hmm. I do also. I will say, mad respect to somebody calling themselves the Rasharni College just asking a question involving Rasharni ecology. Uh, on brand. And, mm -hmm. on yeah. brand. I just want a bird with giant crystal wings. Because that be, that'd be hot. this what Bob says it's possible. See, I think I want like oh yeah, that's cool. cool. Like animals that integrate aethers with their biology. Oh, yeah. that'd be sweet. My, Hell my yeah. pedantic like point here is though that Crow already does this, so we've seen one on screen. Uh, but yeah, but hey. I want more of those. Yo, for sure. No, I, I think that's... there are cooler ways to do it, but people are animals, and they've and we've seen <laughs> one with are mm. animals. Okay, fair. Okay, so I thought. I but thought you were making not evolve to do like a bird that. joke. No, oh. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I, a lot of these places are created anyway. So how much time for evolution and these things actually happen? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, isn't there a whole thing that like the ethers that investiture are investiture speeds up? Oh, that's not where you're going. Okay, Lumar, Lumar. Yes, yeah. right. Yes. Okay, are like more volatile and less yeah. nice yeah. than barrel. the ethers that are yeah, other barrel. places. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. I did remember that. See, look, I know things. You sometimes know, you know lots of things, cool. Alex. We don't want you to be here if you knew nothing. That'd be too much. You'd be like, "What are you guys uh, talking about?" We, you, we yeah. need you to know you enough. Know just but, enough to be dangerous. You know enough to be dangerous, <laughs> to but also enough that when we say our crazy BS, that you're just like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. And that's important I, for the audience. I'm equipped enough to have bad ideas and enjoy having really <laughs> bad ideas. Of like, wouldn't it be wild if? There you go. That's what I'm here to do. Nice. Let's move on and talk about smoke. Oh, God. This me. This... <clears throat> oh, no. I would like to thank whatever God of Fortune put this order in line to give me the Threnody Wob. Thank you. <laughs> nice. I <laughs> appreciate it. Maybe it's a Hoid like sense that got me yeah. here. You have uh, the Threnody so... sense. <laughs> you, you, you knew which question you needed to be at <laughs> at, the, at the right time. Exactly. Okay, so here we got this one. Uh, so the Threnodites are described as having a smoky shadow something to their soul. We don't really know what that is. Is it more similar to the black smoke that comes from awakened objects in Yumi and Nightblood? Or is it more like Midnight Essence in Tress? And Brandon says, it is more like breath than it is like either one of those. More like breath, but something's a little wrong with it. So basically what's happening with Nightblood? <laughs> 
Mm, it's just basically corrupted bread. Um, no, no, no. So I, I think I think the distinction here is the, so the problem with Nightblood, right, is that he is like bleeding out, you know, either a portion of whatever he destroys or excess or you know whatever is happening there. I think this makes perfect sense to me because I think mm-hmm. what Brandon is saying is the Thranodides have a piece of investiture that is a lot like breath Mm. that is attached to their soul a lot like breath Mm. and that's Mm -hmm. it that's the end of the story yeah 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 we saw like the canticle the canticlites like passing their investiture back and forth which is kind of a breathy sort of thing when they like touch each other you know Mm -hmm. that's good they they have a little natural investiture transfer that they do Mm -hmm. which was really cool there's a part of me that i'm like i don't know if it's like necessarily saying that they have something like a breath that's like detachable in any way but i think it's saying like there's something wrong with their innate investor something like he's like it's mm. like breath and that breath is part of your soul and like this is part of their soul but there's something weird going on yes here. Mm-hmm. yes that's what i meant yes i wasn't mm-hmm. implying that the shade is detachable in some way gotcha. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like it it only makes sense with endowment because like endowment's power like can do that transference like there's no reason like ambition stuff would do that in fact, yeah. I would suspect ambition stuff would actually be really bad to transfer. Like it, it wants it's power not, for itself. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a team player. No, <laughs> probably not. No. Hey, hey, Alex, remember when we were talking about color earlier? Let's talk about color. Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. Here we go. What would happen if an awakener drew color from an emerald and then a soulcaster tried to soulcast with it? Brandon, that's an excellent question. The color of the gemstone is working as sort of a key to help the soulcaster and to facilitate this. There are soulcasters that could do it if it's been drained, but for most of them, it's just not going to work. They're going to view that too much like a diamond or even quartz, and it's just going to fiddle with the process to the point that it won't work. There are some people who could do it anyway. So I guess this is saying is that the person who is doing the soul casting can probably impose enough of their like knowledge and perception onto the device to say, yeah, I know this looks like a diamond to you, but really it's an emerald. And like, I know it's an emerald. And so like Mm -hmm. that kind of makes it work. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it makes perfect sense to me. What's strange to me is like, again, with the siblings line about how like different color gems are like different like flavors to spread. I'm like, why does the perception of the person matter? If it's like you're offering, you're like, hey, here's some green you want to turn into plant, you know, like. I almost imagine like, I wonder if the cognitive perception of the emerald also has something to do with it. Like if the emerald Emeralds remembers all. being green before its color <laughs> yeah, got drained sure. away and the soul caster can be like, mm-hmm. no, no, you are an emerald. I know that you're an emerald, even though you don't look like an emerald, and then, like persuade you it. can function like an emerald. Yeah. 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 Well, and like it may make a difference if it's a, a radiant soul caster versus someone using a fabriol, where they, like, yeah. they don't have to deal with the thoughts of a spren. Like it's just their own perception but might also Radiant's depend. Need the gem to be the right kind. That's true. True. I think it makes it easier, yeah. but they don't. Yeah. It's not. It's not a requirement, but I do think it affects it. Probably. It's. I'm sure it's helpful because yeah, I, I seem to recall for a though. garnet when yes. Sha- when Shalon yeah. is dying, and I'm like, well, you probably. Hopefully, you're not so in yeah. deep with your deep cover that you're like, well, if I can't get a garnet, the girl dies. Yeah, because she's, she's mentioned she's bad at organics, yeah. yes. so I think she needs mm-hmm. the crutch of like the correct gemstone. Yes, to, like, yes, 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 yes. Help there. Mm-hmm. There's also, or or there might be kind of a a, a factor here on what kind of soulcaster device we are dealing with, right? Because mm-hmm. there are some that only do one essence or two essences, and there there's some that do all ten somehow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure I don't that know that's, Brandon remembers that. That's in the Horn Eater novella, guys. Forget an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect place for yeah. some Fabrio science. I, but like I, the color I, of I, gems, I, like this has always been weird to me because it's not just like any red gem works. It's like 
Ru- red rubies. Yeah, yeah, no, spiritual and Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, probably. Just like, Why does the color matter? If yeah, it's it a ruby. It does. That's red. Well, because and it's been magically color affected. Oh, well, it's still like the chemical scratch curtain. Well, still because still rubies, rubies are ruby. also sapphires, though. That's the thing. Yes. Because yeah. multiple gems are the same yeah. chemical yeah. thing. I-, I am aware. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but like versus but like if like it a was a red gem. ruby it's been or, color drained to clear like it's still like structurally chemically, a red mm-hmm. ruby mm-hmm. well but chem- chemically it will be a little different because it is a chemical difference that causes the color it's a it's a minute amount that changes that primarily it is the same but in terms of like actual chemistry i agree with you in terms of like weird like out of weird awakening changing the color of things i don't know what's actually happening it actually there changes the chemical the color contrib- change contribution yeah. sure well i don't even uh, i'll throw out that i think you said before that a gemstone that's been drained of color couldn't hold stormlight so i'm not even really sure how we're using these for awakening but yeah uh, it's maybe it's you have just, to really is... strongly be out there in the storm perceiving it as a ruby i don't know but i think really... this is an interaction brandon never intended oh, yeah. to yeah. happen yeah yeah but he he did a color magic and then said color was important for gems and it's like yo brandon these are going to interact and yeah. well and then now he's just freestyling whenever people ask him questions <laughs> yeah yeah he should well he shouldn't he, he's, he doesn't actually want to do a color magic every time he has a color magic the color doesn't actually matter <laughs> he'll, he'll like kind of say it and then he'll be like ah but you can still get around that <laughs> <laughs> i'm uh, no, I'm go. I can't go that deep. I started to try to think about aromatics, and I was like, no, I don't <laughs> that was a wise decision. <sighs> it was going to be about Photoshop again, so I was like, this is apparently the only way I understand aromatics is through the Adobe Suite because that's the only arcane nonsense. <laughs> the only final shard is Adobe. All right, okay, and it okay, doesn't fine. work very well because and constantly we're crashed. in it. You guys asked me to be on this it's episode. Splintered. Yeah. So when awakening is like pulling the color out of something to fuel it, is it actually like removing the color from the object or is it like changing the way? That, like, are you moving the saturation slider down on the object? This is a good metaphor. But if somebody was able to move the slider back up, like would the original color still like be there or is it like removed like you then saved the jpeg and there's no way to know what the color originally was before you, you see where you I, oh, this is, a good is there spiritual mumbo jumbo or physical mumbo jumbo yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. no. is what we figured out so I'm, I'm pretty sure he's been asked about this about, sure been asked about, this, about like you know what's go- like when you lose color like what's going on here essentially mm-hmm. and he said that mm-hmm. like something spiritual is happening. Like, well, it's got to be yeah. spiritual, right? Cause, Physically, cause, the object's not changing, yeah. but something spiritual has occurred. Yeah. Shard blades do the same thing, right? They cut yeah, they the make soul. The gray, yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. eyes burn out. And especially in the case of Vivena's blade, uh, like the, the, the flesh grays out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not just like an Instagram filter that's been put over this. Like there is something innate that has been removed. Yes. Yeah. You've, you've removed mm-hmm. the concept of color. The spiritual the concept of color in the thing. But I kind of interpret that almost as the spiritual saturation filter, right? Like that bar. Because like physically, chemically, it's the same, right? And so theoretically, you be. could adjust that to move it back, right? So mm-hmm. I I don't think it's that difficult. Yes. Yes. I think that's a good metaphor. It's a good metaphor, Alex. Hell yeah. Could there we go. silver undo color draining? <laughs> Let's move on from that to the next question. <laughs> this is some like photography darkroom sort of. A no, this is talking about investiture now. and what happens with investiture with silver. If we I get think. the silver nitrate like, to be able to sli- develop the black and white film. Oh, I hate it's it. Actually, here. <laughs> silver can counteract the withering effect. Yes, of- yes. yes, that is true. Is this analogous to the? chromatic withering of awakening yeah i kind of want to ask this question now silver infused prism that could shine silverized light onto (laughs) 
That's what, not silver eyes like. Yeah, silver not eyes to prism. Confused, so let me know. Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> not to be confused. This is what silver light is, guys. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we solved it. We nailed it. You you heard it here first. We have solved everything. We're I don't so know smart. what you heard or what you understood of it, but you heard it here first. My shard cast now. I figured out. I'm declaring is, things. Is the about title the just Alex here. figures out silver light. <laughs> <laughs> I solved real Maddox. <laughs> There's no more questions. <laughs> We're done. Next question. Next question. I don't even know what's <laughs> happening. Questioner asks, do dragons in the Cosmere have their own magic system? And if so, what can you tell us about it? Brandon, you'll get some answers to this very soon because you'll be able to read Dragonsteel Prime. And some of you have read that. We'll be doing this as curiosity, blah, 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 blah. Dragons act in the Cosmere as kind of this. The primary magic system that they use is something akin to soothing and rioting. But they have followers who pray to them and ask for them to help them with their emotions during difficult times. And dragons are able to do that across any distance. That's kind of the main thing they're doing. Other than that, they can transform between a dragon and a person in shape. There's a little bit more to it, but I'll give you those nuggets. Dragons are magical Xanax. I guess so. <laughs> sure. I, I like conceptually like soothing and riding showing up somewhere else mm -hmm. yeah. and like especially a really early system like that's cool mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah because like we haven't really seen maybe it's just because we've been on roshar so much and those sorts of abilities aren't there in roshar but i'm I like mean, they're, they're there a little bit like in the vani's like emotion bracelet from the way of kings okay. yeah. oh yeah that's I been really really important I, Look, I, but it's it exists i yeah. i believe that you could build a fabriel that would do soothing and riding that's like probably that true. Yeah, for sure. very plausible. I mean, uh, like a like a pain real is a very specific version of that, I, right? I it's mean, not an emotion. It soothes mind. your pain. It's but a physical nerve pain. Pain is, is an emotion, emotion in the Cosmere. That but no, it's it not. can be soothed. <laughs> okay, 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 but like Odium has a lot of stuff like this though, because he yeah. is like the god of emotions. Like yeah, we do see, maybe see this happen or something. With, yeah, sure. Oh yeah, I, I, I guess what he does like, to Moash, like what he does away to Moash, is pain. like an extreme soothing to make him feel yeah, nothing. Okay, sure, yeah, sure, sure. Um, the thrill, I think the thrill is burn. is a. These are like rioting emotions that yeah. are. Mm -hmm. I'm Very just saying radiance can't do this, this, is what I'm saying, right? Like the core <laughs> yeah, magic is like, ooh, we're the wrong stuff. god on Roshar. There's more than one. Okay, you well, know, I, mean, I don't god think there's any evidence the fused can either, so, you know. <laughs> the 10th brand, Eric. The 10th brand. The forbidden is, brand. Yeah. I don't think that any of the surges are emotion related. Yeah, I'll exactly. give you that. But exactly. I think there are other things on Roshar that do interact sure. with emotion. I, yeah, I, I agree. Understand. Honors the wrong god to look at for a moment. Yes. <laughs> to be fair, that's a fair point. This also just straight up says they can only transform between dragons and humans, so that's good. Uh, so the shape shifting is just between those two forms. Awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know. I like this. That's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back to our good friend questioner who asks, "What would happen if a person from Scadrial were to try to burn a manifested metal from Roshar?" So Brandon clarifies, so you're meaning they're in Shade Smart, they manifest it, and they try to burn it, right? Questioner said, say a sprint of a radiant manifests as a bead of metal instead of a shard blade, which I do think is a different thing. It absolutely uh, is a different thing. Yeah, totally yes, different absolutely. question. It's very different. Uh, yeah. Brandon then says, okay, you're not going to be able to burn that if it's something that's coming from a sprint, because that's not going to be treated as a metal in your body. Like those are God metals. And that one is actually alive and awake and it's just not going to work. There are ways though, that you could make that work. So it's totally possible, <laughs> but you're going to need something that is not an alive spren that's manifest like that. You're going to need some way to get access to some tenovastium or something that's that's not like some living being. Yes, David. Mm -hmm. so can you burn ox now? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Seems likely Ouch. to me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would argue Sunday that. Sunday spoilers, guys. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. argue that Sigzil did twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. I think, I think it's very, I don't even think that would work just fine. Could, it, could you burn a, a dead a dead-eyed blade no, i don't think dead eyes are dead enough they're not they, dead i enough. don't think they're dead enough no. yeah yeah 
They're mostly dead, just like Princess Bride. It's only mostly dead. <laughs> they're, they're not sufficiently dead. We have yeah. a lot of different yeah. kinds of spren death, and it's like, Oggs is the most dead dead spren. <laughs> Well, no, Fendorana is the most dead, dead okay. spread. Yeah, but you, that's not going to manifest as Stanabastium. <laughs> that's just gone. If you were able to get a chunk off an honor blade, could you burn that, though? Well, because an honor blade is not a spread, right? In fact, a chunk off an honor blade may exist. That's thanks true. Rhythm of War. <laughs> well, like, we do have a blob that the honor blades are away. Yeah, that, that like, they, that, the five scholars yes the five scholars apparently got the no no no, this this is the thing that the five scholars got the idea for making nightblood not from shard blades because they came after the recreants so the shard blades are dead but they got it from the honor blades and it's like wait what they they have (laughs) self-awareness since when and that's that's an actual thing yeah yeah, it's a little annoying to me because in words of radiance, when Calden picks up the honor blade, still says it has not the mind to scream or something like that. Well, I don't and know so how like, it makes any sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but no, I, yeah. I remember that. I think the wobs we have on the subject are a little they, they leave a little room for interpretation. They're not like flat out. Oh, honor blades are, are sentient. Mm hmm. And there's also stuff in the books that suggests that they're not, you know, they're not spren essentially. Sure. So that, like, that's certainly I true. can, yeah, I can acknowledge spren. that maybe they're like very invested, and that investiture has developed a little bit of sentience okay, sure. over yeah, time. Maybe. Sure. So like, there's something there, but not spren it's level. Very or weird that they don't talk to the people who hold them. But okay, sure. Interesting. We've got lots of POVs of people. Yeah. holding and yes. using honor blades yeah. who knows what mood the honor blades have though you know they were abandoned <laughs> like the so oath above it all. Not they're just like to talk to any I of only their want to talk to my herald yeah the full cold shoulder you're treatment. not my herald <laughs> you're not my herald i do just have to say going back to the question yes yes is that apparently the sibling manifested as normal metal the sibling manifested as like iron and steel to make all of the the yeah. fabrials yeah, and crystal and gem and crystal yeah i'm like somehow it could just do whatever does it, it makes okay. sense brandon uh, all of it should be alloy of tanavastium and corvellium uh, i I don't, think, I don't think that's true because we've seen investiture not be metal it's possible it's clear that it's the easiest for it to become metal but i think there's other physical investiture like you know like aethers are not metal Yes. I'm saying like all of the metal that is created should you, you shouldn't be able to make like normal steel and have it count as a god metal. But is he maybe I misunderstood. Is he saying that? Well, like what? he's saying like if it comes from Spren, it's a god metal, but like the sibling makes like iron and steel. Oh, I, I guess and like I, normal I think metals. Like a quarter case to me, Ian. Like, you know, because like because you it's know just like, it's real. weird that the sibling can do that it is but like weird but like think about skadriel that was created by the shards every single atom of metal that exists there it was made like, by metal. a large yeah i'm just like it's weird that the sibling is doing that i, I mean it's I just weird it is i weird. think the sibling acts a lot more like a shard than a spren does that's my opinion it, but, sibling is allowed to be very weird i do agree ian that now that you mention it that is strange I, I do like, concur with you. It would make more sense to me if, like, yes, a, as part of the manifesting, like, the sibling is basically soul casting and creating all of those things. But, like, that's not what's described as having. It's like that those, all of those fabrials are part of its substance, its manifested substance. And, like, but, like, that's normal matter. That's just, <laughs> that's not God anything. That's normal matter. <laughs> It shouldn't be part of your immortal essence. It's an interesting point. But like, yeah, like how much are the veins that the sibling has? It's like, is that, that doesn't look like a god metal. I don't know. It's weird. It's crystal. It's, yeah, it's crystal. Mm-hmm. Weird. <laughs> cool. So we are actually going to go to who's that Cosmere character just because we have, you know, the, we're, we're, we're going to record two episodes one after another, and that takes a, a lot of a lot of effort, and we don't want to be here for seven hours. So 
Because then, then we start getting grumpy with each other for sure. Um, and you start like, having diatribes about the sibling manifesting. <laughs> we're not even <laughs> close to hour seven. <laughs> no, we're still fully in the having fun uh, realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the it's the end of the second episode where it's like, okay, all right, only we're, the fun is torture. You know, like, I'll see the- everybody later. <laughs> <laughs> They're never quite like that. But it's just like, okay, I need to eat food and just do something else for a little bit. You know. Um, but we have so many more Wob episodes to do, so don't worry. So I hope you liked this very unhinged episode. Like we're we're really, I'm I'm having fun. I'm having a ton of fun. Oh, hey, it's it's next time, fun. <laughs> next time we get to talk about Hoyd's love life, and that's, that's always true. Fun. That's true. No. And tune in next week. The Grand Apparatus. Oh damn. I wanted to talk about the Grand Apparatus. Okay. Oh, what do you mean, David? You're going to be here next episode. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> uh, and also Alex's favorite, Bug Mraze. Um, oh, Bug Mraze. I can't. All right. So let's get on over to who's that Cosmere character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Mraze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. Welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17chart.com. I read each clue aloud, and after each clue, these guys have a chance to guess Who's That Cosmere Character? This first one is from Christopher dot dot dot, but the screenshot of this email is cut off. So it, it's from Christopher. <laughs> so Rip. there well, you thanks, go. Christopher. It's spelled like Chris. Tifer or Earth spelling? U- usual spelling. All right. <laughs> Clue one. This character is often rude. Is it wit? It's not wit. wit. Damn. Doro Sadius. It's not Sadius. Lift. It's not lift. Sabarial. It's not Sabarial. I think these are good all good one. guesses. Clue like, two. Are they intentionally rude or inadvertently rude? Maybe we'll find out. We'll find out. Maybe. Uh, clue two. This character grew up in the left car. What about Moash? He's it's not Moash. Rude. Theft. Killing not your theft. best friend's rude. <laughs> Very rude. Frowned upon. Yakimov. It's not Yakimov. Ooh, wow. Yakimov. Kaladin. It's not Kaladin. That's Cal's true. Not true. He's disrespectful. He has, he has a disdain for authority. <laughs> yeah. Clue three. This character has an accent. An Alethi accent, I guess. I I, I would say non Alethi. W- where we see them, like you would say, a, a tech, a, technically everyone has an accent, but like from where we see them, I think their voice would be considered accented. How about that? Interesting. Oh, I can't remember if this is correct or not, but Acidon? Not Acidon. I can remember she I don't was think so. said to have an accent. No. But... She's also not like rude. What does it mean to be from Acidon? Acidon's rude all the time, I thought. For all She's the like one scene girl. we saw her. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you're right, you're right. I was I was thinking of her being like very megalomaniac, but no, in the in the Acidon is just so underused for having such a cool name. You know? Yeah, you ever true. get that? Yeah. Yeah. Liss? It's not Liss. Ooh. Mm. This is I am this accent thing is I'm struggling pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gonna, I yeah, I'm trying to think who would have grown up in a would you I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Cho, Evie's brother, because he lived in a left car oh, for a long time. No, it's oh. not him. Okay. Yeah. Well, he he didn't he didn't grow up there, right? It's being from a left car, though. He he's now he's in Rashir. So, <laughs> <laughs> or where, I wonder what I wonder how that's going for him. Right. Yeah. Oof. Uh, what's her face? Um, the uh the Arden who was talking smack about Asodan. Po po pa po pie pie pie. 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 You don't think about pie very often, that's for sure. Uh, no, it's not I pie. love her, actually. She was, she's one of my favorite great. Yeah, Julie characters. Cool. Yeah, that was good. I built I'm more of a cake based person. on that char- chapter, actually. So. Clue four. This character can be considered royal. Man, Acedon was a great It's not Lopin, is it? I was going to say, probably Lopin, yeah. 
It is Lopin. No. Hey, Lopin's that not rude. Sense. Oh yes, he is. He's, I oh, would yes, say he's not rude. a spread how to flip people flipping. off. <laughs> yeah, flipping rude gestures all the Talk time. Rude gestures. Yeah, Lopin, which is, which is we now. now canonically know kind of what that looks like in <laughs> like according to a wob that will come in some future episode. Eventually, oh, okay. oh. yeah, yeah. Brandon did. Yeah, yes. Fascinating. Yeah, we should nice. have thought about the Daisians. That makes so much sense. Okay. But I was thinking like uh, Huyo, but I'm like, nah, Huyo's not. Oh, Huyo's not. Huyo's not. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I did guess. The last clue, which was originally going to be clue three, but I moved it, uh, mm. is this character can fly. So mm-hmm. that narrowed it down immensely. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I see that. Cool. So now we're going to do our Who's That Cosmia Character priority. Hey, one. Eric, how do we get in the priority queue? <laughs> you get in the priority queue by supporting our Patreon at the Give Herald tier. <laughs> and we will torture you with amazing outtakes. It's uh, true. It's true. We'll Fire. also uh, torture you with amazing outtakes if you give us less money than you need to get into the Herald. That is, that's true. You get, you get the outtakes for a dollar, but you, for $10, you get your name at the end of the video and... You can send in priority cues, which we read faster, kind of. This one is from a long time, definitely commenter, uh, Oliver Newcomb. Oh. And clue one, this character often wears gloves. What about Hesina? It's not Hesina. I was going to guess Hesina, too. <laughs> you guys did this oh, on the Heme Allergy episode. It's really <laughs> funny to edit. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> David did sweep you, though, of Kenny. Well, <laughs> and that episode's finally out, so. Uh, He's got to win there. sometimes. You know, it's true. Um, Steris. It's not Steris. Silence Divine. No, wait, that's a book. Uh, Silence Montaigne. <laughs> <laughs> it is not Silence Montaigne. That's pretty funny. That's funny. I got confused with Solemnity Divine. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Fair. <laughs> Veil. It's not Veil. Clue two. This character comes from a family engaged in trade. See, and I'll I'll give this away for free, folks. I'm thinking about Canticle now too, because they're all wearing those thick gloves. Like but not, none mm-hmm. of them are traders. <laughs> they're they're traders no. to the. <laughs> There's no commerce whatsoever. <laughs> <The king>. um, <laughs> no, we hear about. Um, it's both scarcity. What do you mean? They have infinite few. No, yeah, now now it's post scarcity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this feels too obvious, but I'll say risen. Not risen. Iko. Not Iko. I forgot her name. Oh, Fen. Not Fen. Are gauntlets gloves? <laughs> yes. I wouldn't. If they were gauntlets, I wouldn't call them gloves you know you wouldn't you say get me my gloves and, and expect your gauntlets to come <laughs> yeah <up. laughs> uh, because i can't remember her name i want to guess um adeline's taylor yeah sure Yoka. that you, you can just that, that's unique yeah you could say adeline's taylor there's only one mm-hmm. it's fine well there's probably more but only one that yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no it's not yaksa Clue three. This character's ethnicity is obvious at a single glance, even if he uh, or dreaming she... though awake. It, mm. oh, even if he or she were naked. Uh, it's not dreaming though awake. Mm. Sorry. Wait, wouldn't most people's ethnicity be obvious at a glance, even if they're naked? <laughs> oh, look, I, you I, can I bring it up with all there of your a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is like a specific marker of ethnicity. That oh. is obvious. Okay. Well, wait, okay. What about what about um, like Phelan eyebrows what ab- or something? Yeah. What about Arclomedarian? It's not Arclomedarian. I mean, they're <laughs> you know, the sleepless are one where it would become a little more apparent. <laughs> so you take off their clothes. <laughs> like, oh, even, okay, interesting. Even if that's a weird like. Okay, we have gloves. We have obvious ethnicity, even if naked. And then which I, I think that means like family of trade. The, the marker would not be in the clothing because sometimes clothing can be a bit yeah. okay. indicator. Okay. So it's like okay. there is a like 
visual as like, a physical thing maybe. Okay. Not that's, just, like, that's, that's what i was struggling, struggling with, with. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. that's okay. okay gloves family of traitors ethnicity so that means that they're not terrorists we can roll that out that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> true it's true oh, that's man. a loosey-goosey wand if i ever saw family of traitors that's interesting man yeah i guess our clothes are really a traitor i was just going for it <laughs> Well, wait, wait, wait. This is trader with a D, not traitor uh, yes, like, with a T, yes, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I made a joke about traitors on okay, Canticle, okay. which I thought I was, was like, very funny and no one reacted to. <laughs> okay. Well, that tells you how funny it was. Put your comments below if it was funny. <laughs> Get in the comments. Get in the comments. Get in the comments. It's hard. Man. It's a hard one. Not a lot of traitors are there. I, like I families like... of traitors. I feel like these clues are leading me towards a Thalen character, but I also feel like they're maybe designed to fake you out for a Thalen mm. character. Mm. Mm. Yeah, with the eyebrows. And, yeah, with the eyebrows and the trade, uh, and uh, like Thalen that. women tend to wear gloves. Mm. But so also, I, I feel like I don't necessarily have any more good Thalen <sighs> guesses. I was going to guess Mraze for a second, and then I forgot that he actually trims his eyebrows. The most bizarre thing, like he's Thalen, but we're just, but like we're just told that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am so stymied. Finley you can pass if traders. you want. Queen Fen. I already we guessed. guessed I already end. guessed. We so could, we it's guess not Queen Fen. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I guess I guess from the gloves clue. I I will guess Queen. No, he doesn't wear gloves. I was gonna guess her son. Oh, I remember. It. Oh, well, what is his name? He was kind of fun. Kamakal. Oh, no, Kamakal's a uh, consort. Michael's the consort. Um, Cold prior to the duel. The um, ink spren in Nameless, who is friend of uh, a testament. testament. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Nope. <laughs> uh, clue four: This character has met multiple monarchs at the same occasion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm well, so lost. No, this, is an, this is an oath bringer character. Uh, okay. Maybe Fen's consort wears gloves. So you gotta him. do Fen's consort. Yeah. No, it's not Fen's consort. Okay. Good. Okay. Maybe it's like an like an admiral thing. Mm. He wears gloves. Is there like I'm trying to think? Maybe it's or it could be someone from Don. No. Yeah, they've got to be somebody. I feel they got to be somebody who's at like the Council of Monarchs and they're doing coalition stuff. Mm. We already guessed Vale. It's really difficult to not go Stormlight because like there's so few. It feels very Stormlight. Mm. Well, and also I feel like a lot of the ethnicities on other worlds are not necessarily immediately yes. visible, like sure. a lot of the Skadrian ones. <sighs> Let's yeah, like try to knock a Let's thought loose. Name, if, if you Ned. describe uniquely, that I will give it to you. Okay, it's well of ascension. Okay, there is the the assembly of yep. like government uh-huh. people. There's like the leader of like the the merchant block. Yes. Yes. Does he wear gloves? He uh, is not, that your because he meets multiple co- monarchs because <laughs> Ellen and oh um, ben, ben Set are there. The, no, Penrod was the no, noble. Penrod's the noble. He's thinking of the guy. Penrod's like, the noble. It's like the slimy guy. I know who you're talking about the slimy guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy. No, he's got a he's a POV character. <laughs> yeah. No, no, well, not. I was trying not to go Stormlight. No, that yeah, was, yeah. I mean, no, that was a valiant attempt. Like there, uh, there was wait, a, there wait, a minute, was a, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Arjun. There, there was a part of me that was thinking set Ashweather said, but I'm like, no, he's not. That, he doesn't. Make. See, I'm now thinking Elantris. Everybody's a freaking merchant. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, there's oh, like Avencio. Sh- like a lot of people become king, like very briefly in that sequence <laughs> where, you know, like I don't <laughs> king. And then and no, then, but, it, but it's, it's at the same time. Right. Hmm. So it's got to be like uh, like a like a group call. Did it say it at the same time? What was that? What was that clue? Eric? This the character has met multiple monarchs at the same occasion. Yeah. Well, maybe they they definitely were all hanging out at times. They weren't all monarchs yet. Maybe that doesn't <laughs> work then. But like, I, there's I, like the, the, there's I and Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the hair splitting there. I appreciate that. Yeah. Damn. But there's huh. there. I forgot about all the merchants in Elantris. Like I've forgotten so much. Surely uh, not Kayain. 
I'm gonna no, guess he doesn't wear gloves. I'm gonna guess Ahan no. from Alondris and just get it over with. There we go. <laughs> nope. Alex, you're up. <laughs> I don't like this question. <laughs> Having fun. I, is it the son of the Reshi King? No. Nope. Who nope, I don't think he's not. I, I like him but... too. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's good. All right. He's pretty cool. I'm so sorry because clue five is this character has been to your theater. <laughs> Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. You can okay. abandon my. Yeah, that's not helping at all. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a bonus. They're not failing. How about that? Okay. I, Thanks. I appreciate. And they're a minor Azish character, right. <laughs> or like Makabaki, like kingdom character. I bet. Oh, what about no? The the Iriali don't send a representative, right? They just do no. like a like a call with them, like a. Yeah, they said the tie reader to say this is chill. We're not going to join your coalition, and they. Yeah. The tide, yeah, the tide readers, yeah. yeah. Obvious yeah. ethnicity one is tripping me. What about? I'm gonna guess. Was, here, was... I got one. I got one. What about? We don't even get his name. The uh, Prince of Tashik is there trading information all the time. No. Okay. Thank God it's over. <laughs> I was kind of vibing. This is not a guess, but I was kind of vibing Malata, but I don't think there's anything visibly vetted about her. I don't think she's a traitor either. She does wear gloves. She's like low class, though. Like I could yeah. maybe see. Is that. that your guess? But I don't think. No, that's not my okay. guess. But I was vibing it. <laughs> okay. Good. Good talk. I don't, I don't think there's like a visible marker of being vetted that would fit that clue enough. So. Because even the red hair is like Unkalaki, technically. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think she's red-haired. I don't so. think so either. I don't think we even... She must be described at some point. What a non-character. Merchant, family, Urethiru, met lots of monarchs. Uh, 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 I don't know. Cord? Cord? It's not Cord. Where's gloves? I give up. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, That's I speak victory I to you, Oliver Newcomb. <laughs> still uh, it's not, not still. yet not yet I, I i did need to wait to give this one for some some big nerds to be on the show for sure oh okay. <laughs> well we failed you we failed you yeah you didn't you need to find <laughs> bigger nerd somewhere eric you have to make a bigger nerd <laughs> These questions are too strong for you traveler <laughs> 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 It's like a lobby. Shardcasters who can be bigger nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, what Ian's about the best of Rock's family? <laughs> 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 you know, song the wife, song the daughter. <laughs> Beautiful song. Beautiful, Beautiful song. song. Yeah. And little Kumatiki. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, I wonder... and that came up in the last one. <laughs> I wonder how they're doing. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out in the horn eater, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe in a year. I feel like this should be obvious. Uh, oh, no. I don't. I don't think it's obvious. I think this is like some like at the at best case scenario secondary character. If not, the some guess like, I'm not making is Terra because we. It's never been confirmed that that character in your theory was Terra, or that uh -huh. she's a. A traitor. Or that she's met multiple monarchs. Oh, that she, like, her ethnicity is obvious. <laughs> yeah. Her, she has the lefty black hair. It's fine. There are a yeah. few issues with Tara as a theory. <laughs> I guess no. we do recognize immediately that she's not Thalen, but... She wears a Thalen dress, though. I guess you have to take the... She has to take the Thalen dress off. So people know. I don't know. Well, like, that's how people keep describing her as like, oh, she's not Thalen, but she wears Thalen clothes. And so, like, they yeah. know immediately. That I mean, it's people. It's Kaladin in one flashback that describes her that way. Anshalon in the bar. We're going to figure out everything about Tara in that interlude in Stormlight. Yeah. Brandon promises. <laughs> yeah. She's the, the through line character. She's the through line. <laughs> oh, God. Very important. <sighs> Ian does not want to give up. <laughs> Navani. No, nope, she wears gloves. It's not Navani. I know <laughs> you, you guys were just chomping at the bit. This is Aunok. <laughs> oh, Aunok. Oh my Damn. god. Damn. It's so you're gonna have to wow. who Aunok he's, is. He's, 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 he's not in. He's blue. Yeah, he's blue. <laughs> he's a, I he's a, 
Yeah, he's an ambassador who shows up in the Way of Kings, and then he kind of represents New Notanon in Oathbringer, and he's like, "Give us back our Oathgate on Narok," and they're like, "For sure, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. didn't remember him. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that was Ooh. good. But like, that, I knew people yeah. would recognize, like, oh, Aonok. People, That's not necessarily yeah, everyone. Yeah. That was not a that was not a BS thing. Like he's appeared multiple times. He's got some dialogue. He's, like appear, he's, he's appeared character. twice right. for sure. Yeah, right. I yeah. wouldn't have remembered gloves or that he's from a family oh, of so, Sorry, yeah. three times. There's three chapters cited on this copper mine page. Dang. Good sir. All right. Thank you all for watching. You can find us on 70 chartcom for any news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. Uh, you can support our Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Join our Discord. We got cool stuff. Lots of stuff going on on Discord, as always. Uh, You can find us on lots of other places and subscribe on YouTube and stuff. And we'll see you next time, I guess. Bye. 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 Peace.